I don't know about you, but I kind of hate Windows 11 for a fistful of reasons. And at the very least on my gaming rig, I frequently wished I could just leave it behind. Can we please leave it behind or at the very least just escape it for a decent chunk of the gaming we do? Well, Right now, there's some SteamOS stuff just on the very cusp of releasing that has a lot of people excitedly chattering about if, finally, Linux is in a place where at long last, Windows' unquestioned dominance of PC gaming has its days numbered. Now, I'm not sitting here claiming that it's all over for Windows, that'd be stupid, frankly. And I mean, for literally at least three decades now, I've heard the Linux core types breathlessly insist that current year is the year of Linux on the desktop. And it just never, ever happens. No. But at the absolute very least, Windows might very soon now not just be the de facto only option in the minds of the average enthusiast gamer, the ones who care more about gaming than they do messing with obscure operating systems. And, and yes, I know, Linux is hardly obscure. It's everywhere. It's basically the bones and organs of the internet itself. But you know what I mean when I say that. So don't be pedantic about it, all right? <laughs> And in 2025, we are, I have no doubt in my mind, going to see some highly inviting, significant jumps forward. And a lot more mainstream attention on Linux gaming, and specifically SteamOS, as a valid and enticing choice to let gamers escape the ever more bloated, bug-riddled AI spyware and ad-infested garbage that is the likes of Windows 11. Hello again, I am Blunty, and in your way past that like button today, I'd love to hear your thoughts on how Windows has been treating you as a gamer recently, and if you've ever tried Linux for gaming, and how that went for you, or indeed, if you've ever considered it but decided against it for whatever reason. And please be sure to subscribe, because there's going to be a follow-up to this video where I test out the reality of a certain SteamOS clone that is, spoiler alert, shockingly good. But will it survive the actual arrival of SteamOS itself on other hardware? I kind of doubt it. SteamOS is, I doubt many watching this video will need explained, Valve's in-house operating system tailored especially for gaming, made for a controller input by default, backed by one of the biggest names in PC gaming, and so far exclusively saving the Steam Deck from having to chug along with the much-hated Windows 11. Soon, though, SteamOS starts its long-promised expansion, loosed from the gates of the Steam Deck and arriving on third-party devices, starting with the Lenovo Legion Go S, which is really next month and something I've broken down in more detail in another video recently if you are curious about that. Valve also has now confirmed that within the next few months we will see the first beta version of SteamOS made available for other existing handheld devices like the Asus ROG Ally and you bet I'll be testing that on mine. Again, stay tuned. For now though, Valve are focusing on the PC gaming handhelds specifically with SteamOS. But with SteamOS stretching out, it's inevitable we will see it become much easier for use on laptops and desktops too. And while there are several Linux-based distributions already that closely mimic the kind of experience the Steam Deck has, the big issue with them, at least in the eyes of the regular gamer, is the fact they are just exactly that. They're mimics. They're copycats, they're Me Too's, weirdly named, obscure, practically esoteric Linux installs controlled by who the hell knows who's ever heard of these guys for who the hell knows how long. At least that's the context of it from a more mainstream eye. Who the hell knows which one is good? Who can you trust to tell you which one is good? How long can it be relied upon in the future of, you know, ongoing updates and patches and compatibility? Just shrug. Meanwhile, Valve, well, every gamer knows Valve and every PC gamer undoubtedly relies on Steam for most of their gaming needs. And Valve have earned a fair amount of trust over the last couple of decades of doing things well, mostly right. So a Valve-backed Linux-based operating system for gamers that is easy to install, easy to run, streamlined to keep out of your bloody way as much as possible, focused on gaming, based on free and open sourced basics, and is easy to find support for, both officially and from a large engaged gaming user base. Well, 
That makes Linux gaming a lot more attractive than these also runs and fly by nights and weirdo names. And just that fact alone, the fact that Valve is behind it, I think it'll become a significantly more inviting option as an alternative to Windows, a legitimate, honest, earnest, useful alternative to Windows. And thanks to the Steam Deck, over the last three years, Linux gaming compatibility and performance has come a long way, a lot faster, than it was happening before Valve's game-changing handheld arrived. And hardware compatibility, specifically GPU stuff, has improved faster too. The improved game compatibility is largely through a special automatic Windows to Linux translation tool called Proton. It sits between a game made for Windows and automatically translates its software calls to the operating system to things Linux understands. It is not an emulator pretending to be Windows, but if that helps you contextualize it, you can think about it that way. That's not what it is, but you know, most people are more familiar with emulators than translation layers. And it works shockingly efficiently which is a double-edged sword because it means a lot of devs that would, and frankly should, and who have the resources to make a Linux native version of their titles, which would be the most ideal situation, but they choose not to, relying on Proton instead. It's a bit like how certain game devs, instead of, you know, optimizing their games, rely on frame generation to fake higher frame rates instead. Hi Capcom, how are you doing with one Monsanto Wilds and those recommended hardware and charts and stuff, eh? Hmm? Hey? Hmm? But there are still problems. There's still lingering issues with a few multiplayer titles that incorporate certain kinds of third-party anti-cheat systems and kernel-level DRM and the like. Most of the widely used anti-cheat and DRM systems do now have native Linux options, thanks in large part to the demand the Steam Deck generated for that. But again, not all devs bother to use them properly, and some devs just arrogantly, deliberately ignore it completely. You might have heard news a few months ago about GTA 5 Online being completely broken and absolutely foobarred by them finally including an anti-cheat, only to utterly ignore the Steam Deck, which completely broke their game on anything but Windows. So why do screwing over gamers like this? Well, mainly I think it's because it's still a small market. In 2022, there was less than 1.5% of Steam users running Linux. Right now, that number has grown to about 2.2%, still a comparatively small number to be sure, but it is constantly, albeit slowly, growing. This year though, with Lenovo releasing that first third-party SteamOS-based handheld and Valve releasing the first betas for other existing handhelds, there is sure to be a lot of attention, a lot of chatter about it online, and a lot more people just trying it out. The increased accessibility, the increased visibility, and driven by the free open source nature of it, the high level of personal control, and a focus on performance and gaming, which is something Windows certainly doesn't do, I personally hope we're at the threshold of seeing Windows lose its de facto monopoly and stranglehold on PC gaming. I think I can say without much risk of anyone arguing with me, in good faith at least, that Windows 11 has been somewhat less than beloved. In fact, I would say, in general, it has infuriated a lot of gamers. Basically, every single update has arrived with issues and bugs, and even more embarrassingly, several of the major updates over the last year, year and a half or so at least, have had to be stopped and recalled because they were so poorly tested by Microsoft, they broke a crap load of issues and created so many severe problems, and in one example, stopped a few games from even being able to launch. And even when it does work roughly as intended, Microsoft have been bloating the crap out of it with unwanted, unasked for features like AI powered spyware constantly taking screenshots of everything you do on your desktop and Copilot, more so called AI just bloating the crap out of everything, slowing things down, injecting ads into every space they can because F you, I guess. Windows 11 is just miserable. And if you're being all happy and smug going, well, I never bothered to upgrade, I'm still on Windows 10. Well, guess what loses support this year? Yeah, Windows 10. Now, I'm not going to go as far as to predict 2025 as the year of Linux PC gaming. But it might be the dawn of the age of Linux gaming. I think we'll see it keep pushing forward more visibly than ever before and almost certainly noticeably accelerating rather than just sort of ticking along in the background. 
And indeed, as you might have assumed, all the gameplay I've had going on in the background of this video was running through Linux, but not SteamOS. It is something else, but is specifically an install designed to extremely closely mimic SteamOS's approach. And once more, please stay tuned and check that subscribe button because I am going to dig deeper into that and look at this more closely and the kind of slap together build I made to test it in its own video coming up real soon. Because not everything went flawless, there were some weirdo issues that frustrated me, but are they big enough issues to worry about, or were they easy to solve, and is it going to get in the way of sort of the regular gamer uh, properly enjoying Linux? And let's not pretend gaming on Windows is problem free, by the way. But yeah, I'll explore all of that in an upcoming video real soon now. Uh, meanwhile, thank you very much for watching, hopefully you've let me know what you think in the down below. I am Blunty, and thank you to the patrons scrolling away up above there. Catch you next time.